Now you are looking at the lunar surface uh, magnified optically by 180 times. Yeah. I have attached my iPhone 5s to GSO 16 inch Newtonian telescope. This is uh, on a Dobsonian mount and I will be uh, moving it sideways along right ascension declination by 3 arc minutes at a time. You can see other areas on the lunar surface. Seeing the limb. see innumerable craters the larger ones are known as the basins and you can see the debris which flies uh, upward into the space not here there uh, upward into the space it settles down to form uh, another uh, small mountain in in the middle of the basin the smaller ones are called craters the bigger ones are known as basins there are innumerable basins out there This surface stands witness to what we can expect here on earth if there is no shielding provided by the atmosphere. The surface would get impacted and side by side this also signifies that uh, whatever uh, uh, surface features they get formed on moon they remain there for uh, a much longer period so this uh, kind of signifies uh, the relative absence of uh, any uh, tectonic activities so because in case of earthquakes the crust vibrates and uh, the craters and all these features they tend to fade away with the passage of time such a thing is like known in case of Mars. So one half of Mars is uh, covered, one hemisphere is covered by craters. The other hemi on the other hemisphere, the craters are uh, relatively uh, uh, very sparse, they are quite absent. So that signifies that uh, on half of the Mars, uh, there is a lot of uh, volcanic or other tectonic activity, uh, while on the remaining half, the activity is almost absent and likewise a lot many craters can be seen on that graph. Now we move on to another area. The image is inverted, the image is rotated, then it will be turned digitally also. So without caring about uh, which side is which, just look at the vast countless number of craters of all sizes and dimensions and somewhere over there on one of the poles we'll have our the lunar lander which was sent by ISRO but unfortunately that couldn't make it to a safe landing so now you can see when the stepper moves the telescope shakes then eventually the oscillations they tamp down and then you get to see a stable image now these small uh, corrections you can see these are the, the tracking steps of the stepper motors if i stop tracking you can see the lunar surface sweeping across uh, the field of view as earth rotates so i'll just stop uh, the tracking for a moment and you can see the effect of earth's rotation so here we stop and i can see it rotate uh, uh, sweeping past 
you can also see the small vibrations they are due to the air turbulence so we again go back to from where we had started you can see the long shadows of the highlands so we go come back to the same previous location Sometimes the controller makes some adjustments because uh, I'm using a 16-bit uh, microcontroller. It's an Arduino Mega board which is uh, controlling a telescope, and so there is significant truncation error accumulation at times, and after that it jumps kind of. So that's normal with it. A 32-bit controller will do the tracking much more smoother. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Do keep in touch for similar videos in future. Thanks.